Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service of holy worship here this Sunday. I am Chaplain Jer Henson. Jer rhymes with air. I am delighted to be your supply clergy this morning as your rector is off for the uh, wedding of his daughter. How marvelous that he can have a recreative time. And y'all are stuck with me today. Um, but before we begin, I'd like to turn it over for a few announcements to your senior warden. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I was reminded that the people at home do not have the announcements, so I'm going to go through all of them. Um, and uh, you know that David has been talking about various ministries inside the church. There is um, a uh, notice about what a LEM does. A LEM is what I am today, a lay Eucharistic minister. Um, we read, we say the prayers of the people and we um, uh, give out the wine at communion. And if anybody would like to be a lamb, they would be most, most, most welcome. Our, our troops seem to be dwindling, so please let David know if you would like to be a lamb. Um, <clears throat> we need school supplies. There is a school supply drive going on for second story. Uh, Please go to the website if you want to just donate or you may bring in any number of the supplies that are needed. They are listed in the bulletin. They are also listed on the website. We are hoping that Franciscans might join together tonight at the Concerts on the Green at, um, in Great Falls and the group joins to the, as you're looking at the little gazebo, to the um, left of the White House. So look, look for people you know from church and have a good time. Um, <clears throat> I think that that's pretty much all of the new announcements. I am, however, I'll, since I'm here, put in a plug. I really need somebody to lead a rummage sale in, um, the first, on the first Saturday of October. Um, what we're hoping is that people will rent a space, perhaps 10 by 10, and they can fill that space with as much stuff as they want because they're responsible for bringing it, they're responsible for taking in their money, own money, and they're responsible for taking everything back home or wherever they're gonna take it. Um, so we really just need somebody to let the community know that this is going on, to keep track of who's gotten a space um, and to advertise it um, and then probably mark out the spaces on the Saturday morning. Um, it's not going to be a difficult job, but it will be our only fundraiser in the fall, so it's important. Thank you. Good job. We begin our service today by singing Hymn 296. Hymn 296. <laughs>
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of Holy Scripture. A reading from Genesis. The Lord said to Abraham, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how grave their sin. I must go down and see whether or not they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked? Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, Suppose forty are found there, he answered. For the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there, he answered. I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found. The word of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I call, you answer me. You 
Before I move on to the next reading, I will say that in your bulletin, the passage is completed. It's not complete here. Um, and he said, suppose 10 are found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. A reading from Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you are circumcised with special circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you? If your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I am absolutely delighted to be with you here this morning. Most of my time is spent in a five-sided building just south of D.C. I'm a Navy chaplain. I currently serve as the chief of staff for the chief of Navy chaplains. So getting to be with actual people instead of documents and bureaucracy is a real treat. So thank you and thanks to your rector for being away and giving me this opportunity. Now right now we're strangers. We don't know each other very well. Hopefully by the end of our time together um, that will have changed a little bit. But when a supply clergyman prepares to come and spend time with strangers, we go about it in a variety of different ways. And the way I do it to prepare to be with people I've not been with before is I take the lessons, the scriptures that you just heard read, and I go and I find 18 to 25-year-olds in particular in my building. And I say, hey, What resonates with you in this? What strikes you? What can you capture from these readings? Most of them are not churched. Many of them have very little uh, history of being brought up in the faith. So it's a time for me to get after them. I look at the cross that's on the lapel of my uniform as a bit of a hunting symbol. (laughs) So I'm out there with them. So I took these readings to them. First reading from Genesis, this magnificent argument between Abraham, the father of faith, and God. And as a military person, this is the first time in human history where we see a conversation about discrete and proportionate means in the use in bello, the the trying to discuss the value of life in war first time in recorded human history that this conversation takes place. I am thrilled to talk about such things. My 18 to 25 year olds, not so much. (laughs) So then I went with the, the passage that we had from Colossians, which is again a magnificent piece 
about digging into theology, about thinking about God, about the phenomenon of Christ and what it means for us today and how then ought we live. I am delighted to have those sorts of theological discussions. Did that resonate with my 18 to 25 year olds? Not this week. <laughs> so then I've got the gospel, right? Two strikes. I love baseball. In fact, your rector and I have a little bit of a rivalry because he's a Red Sox fan. I'm from Missouri. I grew up with the Cardinals. So I could, first time we had a television when I was a young boy was 1967. So ask your rector about what happened in 1967 <laughs> in the World Series. Don't ask me about 2004 or 13. I skipped those years. <laughs> My father remembered 1946, however, too. So we're two and two. In any case, I've got this magnificent scripture which contains the Our Father. This, you think, all right, I've got them now. I can talk about prayer. This will be something that is of great interest to them in the Our Father. What a magnificent prayer it is. It shows up here in Luke and in the seventh chapter of Matthew. And again, did it resonate with them? I can claim a foul tip. <laughs> because the prayer itself did not. But when you get on further into the text, the part that caught their imagination was when they, we were talking about when God, Jesus, when Jesus talks about the idea that if someone asks for a fish, does someone give them a snake? If they ask for an egg, are they given a scorpion? And in Matthew's gospel, if you read that, if they ask for bread, are they given a stone? So those three dichotomies, bread and stone, fish and snake, egg and scorpion, was where at least three of my sailors' imagination latched onto. And they said, that's when I quit believing in God because of that. And I went, tell me more. And for these three in particular, uh, two sailors and a marine, they had, as young people, been praying and praying and praying while their parents were in duress. And eventually it ended in divorce for them. And they had prayed and prayed and prayed that God would hold things together for them. And their prayer, in their mind, as a small child, was not answered. So God was either a monster or a silent. And they had nothing further to say to God. It reminded me of a time when I was thinking about being a priest many, many years ago. I've been an Episcopal priest for 31 years. 28 of that have been in naval service. Uh, but I was, in, I was a mathematician before I was a priest. And I was in a PhD program at the University of Missouri at Rolla, which is now the Missouri School of Science and Technology. The local priest in that town got it in his mind that I ought to be spending more time with people than numbers. Uh, you can see how it turned out. But back in 30-some-odd in, uh, years ago, the issue was in doubt. And he, had, he and I were having uh, an afternoon pint at a pub. Uh, my mom's British, so those kind of words spill out of me fairly regularly. And this... He was, he was talking to me about faith and about working with young people. And this large guy saw my, my friend and mentor, the priest, in his dog collar sitting there with me. And he came over to us, this very large biker. I mean, he was a bear. He was huge. He had scars. He had tattoos. He had chains. Certain expectants well prepared me to deal with sailors and marines. <laughs> but not at that point in time. And I was a little bit scared. And he came over and he said to, uh, to my friend, Father Joe, he said, are you a priest? And I could smell the Bud Light or whatever <laughs> it was. And I was like, all right, if I roll his knee, I can probably give Father Joe a time to get away if this is what, what it's gonna be called for. 
And Father Joe just kind of looked at him and smiled as a cherub and said, why, yes, I am. Would you like to join us? And I was way beyond my comfort zone. But the guy plopped down and he said, you're a priest. And Father Joe again said, yes, yes, I am. He's like, I don't believe in God. I thought, oh, this isn't going to end well. <laughs> Father Joe, however, said, tell me about this God that you don't believe in. Remarkable words. And Father Joe, just to let you know, he was fearless. He had been a stretcher bearer on Omaha Beach. So if you've seen those sorts of movies, you know that he was there. He had been a missionary in North Africa in the 1950s when the Algerian Civil War was happening when being a Christian was uh, a disadvantage, shall we say, for that particular place and time. And here he was in central Missouri, the rector of a, a small church in a college town. And this fellow poured out a description of a god who seemed to prefer stones and snakes and scorpions to bread and fish and eggs. A God who was a monster and who delighted in the failings of people and would cast them into eternal darkness at the drop of a hat. And so he poured out this story, his personal story. His parents had been divorced. He'd grown up on the streets. All this alienation and isolation that I wish I could say was isolated to his story, but it's not. It is the common lot of many of my sailors and Marines these days. We live in the most virtually connected, socially isolated time for humanity on this planet, I think. The forces of alienation and isolation are strong. And my friend the priest heard him pour out his, his heart, and he says, and that's why I don't believe in God. Father Joe sat, he smoked a pipe, so he refilled his pipe, he looked at the fella, took a sip from his beer and said, you know what, I don't believe in that God either. Let me tell you about the God that I believe in. A God who is far more interested in bread, in fish, in eggs, the spiritual food that will nourish a soul that is found in community. At the end of our afternoon together, having watched them work, uh, I knew that the conversation had taken a very different turn than where I thought that it would go. As time passed, that young man became a member of the congregation, was baptized, and went on to other things. And I marvel at the engagement. It, he loved saying the prayer, our Father. And he loved that because those words can only be said in community. And that's what overcomes the forces of alienation and isolation is our community, our being able to gather together so that we can pray our Father instead of my Father. It is our Father, a word that can only be said when we say it together. And when you do this as a life of prayer in community where you are strengthening each other as you gather, and I know we gather virtually online, it is something, it is a number greater than zero, but I think it is not much greater than zero than being here together in community, where we can pray together. And as my liturgics professor would say, praying shapes believing. Now, he had Latin words for that. I don't remember them. But praying shapes believing. So that our prayer together, our life of common prayer together, then influences the way that we think so that we can begin to delve into the theological phenomena and make sense of what it is that God means to us. What Christ Jesus, being the fullness of God in human form, means to us. What the gift of life, which is so precious, 
means to us and under what circumstances, if we move on to arguing with God, that precious life gift may be taken. Is it enough that there be 100, 40, 30, 10? The logical conclusion, one? How valuable is life? So you see, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that our, it all begins with us wrestling with what life has presented us. And so I wrestled with my sailors and that marine the same way that I had inherited the words that my mentor had used. And I asked them about the God that they did not believe in. And it led to a different conversation than they had imagined. Where do we, as the community of faith, where do you, as St. Francis, find those opportunities to ask those kinds of questions? To be a, a place where you can wrestle with theological discord, when you can look at phenomena and say, hmm, God, what is really going on here? My prayer life is an active argument day after day after day in trying to make sense of what God is doing. I hope that is what you find in your life in community here because that is the gift to the world that our church has to offer. May God sustain you in this holy work. There is much to do. Let's be about it. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand and join with me as we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the Lambeth Conference, and the gathering of the Anglican Communion to consult and strengthen the bonds of fellowship, the Diocese of Virginia, the Diocese of Ezo, St. Francis Church, and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Susan and Jennifer, bishops, and Mark, bishop-elect of the Diocese of Virginia, Isaac, bishop, and John, retired bishop of the Diocese of Ezo, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Congress, the President and his administration, 
the justices and judges of the federal courts, the Virginia legislature, the governor of Virginia and his administration, the judges of the Commonwealth courts, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Great Falls, McLean, Reston, Vienna, Fairfax County, Loudoun County, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to use it in accordance with his purposes, and to his glory, let, it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in air, for business, pleasure, relaxation, family connection, and returning home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, especially for the people of China, Ethiopia, Russia, Sri Lanka, Tibet, Ukraine, and the Uyghurs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, Tony, Jill, Janet, Pauline, Mark and Jackie, Charlie, Maria and Jeff, Rick, Dave, Driss, Bryson, Kim, Martha, Samantha, Kathy and Steve, Henri and Alice, Desiree and Laura, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, and for those who mourn for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of blessed Francis of Assisi and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your Son's name, we beseech you mercifully to incline your ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplications to you, and grant that those things which we have faithfully asked according to your will may effectually be obtained to the relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord.
great-granddaughter of Clarence and Clara Sue Ashley, Aubrey Brielle Ashley. So that's pretty cool, right? Are the grandparent, great-grandparents here? There they are. All right. Let us, the Lord be with you and also with you. We know this, all right. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Aubrey Brielle Ashley, as she begins her year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. That is pretty neat. Uh, this is the offertory time, so I invite you, if you are online, to go to the church's website and participate by uh, using the links that are there. I checked them out, I think, before I got here. I am very proud of y'all as a person who deals with 18 to 25-year-olds all the time. They don't carry cash, and they don't know what checks are. So, and the church needs to figure this out so that we can uh, do a better job of stewardship. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. <clears throat> we continue with Eucharistic Prayer C. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies suns, the planets in their courses, 
and this fragile earth our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and have turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in this unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and your Holy Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection, resurrection as we await the day of his coming. coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. The risen Lord, be known to us as the great King of Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, and thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are welcome to the table to receive. If you would care to receive a blessing only, please cross your uh, hands across your shoulders. If you'd like to receive communion, palm up. If you are gluten-free, palm down. I don't know what your tradition is. That helps me to know how best to facilitate your engagement with our Lord. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
you're following along at home, our post-communion prayer is on page 366 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletins. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. In the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I like that. <laughs>